Okay. Well, thank you everybody so much for joining us <clears throat> on the second soul chat. And um, I am your host, Sarah Marie Thompson from wildandcreative.com. So I'm a creative lifestyle expert and soul guide, and I really mentor creative leaders um, to help them find their, their soul's purpose so that they can then build a business and an offering system out of their soul's work and, you know, really bring magic back into their life and business. But I also have four, well, th another one will be coming in about 45 minutes, she said. She unfortunately could not join us at the beginning. But I have three um, amazing um, co-hosts, if you will, with me today. So first one is Dana Kuhn. Now, Dana is a divine purpose guide, and she assists wandering souls in understanding their journey and fully trusting life's process and everything in between that that, uh, that, that entails. So welcome, Dana. So excited. Thank you, Sarah. You're <laughs> welcome. And then we have Anna Frolic, and Anna is an intuitive guide and mentor for soul-inspired business owners. And she helps um, business owners find their purpose, find their purpose, um, and breaking free from their self-opposed limitations to help them step into their true calling. So, welcome, Anna. <laughs> yeah, everyone, and, so good to be here. <laughs> and then we have Lisa Marie Pepe, who is a confidence and online visibility coach, and she helps women. Um, Heart-centered women embrace their unique gifts, develop rock-solid confidence, and gain vibrant visibility. And then um, another guest that we're going to be having come on, Kara Malendi. She's an astrologer and goddess mentor, and she helps healers, lightworkers, and spiritual seekers stop hiding and awaken their inner goddess, which is very cool. So what is going to happen today on this soul chat is it's going to be a two and a half hour call of really just jamming out with these amazing guests. Um, if you have any questions at all during the call, please post them and I'll read them out. Or if you'd like to um, even come on, come on the call or even go on live, just put your hand up and we'll um, unmute you and you can ask questions. And um, if any of the guests, any of you guys have to go to the bathroom or anything like that during the time, just like leave your video um, uh, on so that it stays up at the top and just go come back whatever it's all good and uh, I actually have a bunch of questions that have been sent in by email that I'm also going to uh, ask you guys so it's kind of just like a random questionnaire question period it's just kind of like a fun um, information session for everybody that's going to be watching and uh, you know we'll try to keep everybody's like personal chatting to like a little bit of a minimum right so it's not like an hour long like dana doesn't talk for like a whole hour and then like all that kind of stuff right so anyway we'll go from there so my first question we're just going to dive right in and ladies you're all unmuted so you know it can be kind of just like a, a chit chat if you like but my very first question is from a lady named connie and connie asks what were the key events that led you to this work that you're doing today so who would like to go first Come on, guys. Okay, yes. Oh, Lord. So much. <clears throat> um, <laughs> so much has happened um, in my life as if you can ever sit back and kind of take um, um, just a roll call, right, of everything that has kind of led you up to where you are. We all have a very deep story. And so for me, my, you know, I, I realized that I had a lot to share just a few years ago um, after I had done some really deep soul searching and um, came to the conclusion that I couldn't run for my shit anymore. So this is a grown up conversation, right, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Swearing. Whenever I, whenever I get a little crazy, I, I may um, throw in some F-bombs and stuff. So I apologize now. But. Um, I really couldn't run away from my shit anymore. And so I had to do a, a big kind of go through my own closets and figure out what was holding me back. And a lot of that was addiction, depression, um, super self doubt, wondering if I was even worthy. Um, God, I just got cancer this last summer, which it was so freaking weird. Didn't even know it was there until it was taken out. But I had an idea that something was wrong with my body. 
And so finally, I just started listening. And I was, um, I keyed into a couple of really good mentors. And one of those was Sarah. And just realized that um, if I've had all of this shit happen in my life, there's a lot of women that that has happened to too. And I was wandering for a very long time. And um, finally just came into center and realized that if I just slowed down and paid attention, that I had all of my own answers. And so with that, um, I, my stomach just got really warm. With that, um, I was able to step into the grace of collecting all of these wonderful things that I had learned and learned from and created a foundation that was easy and simple so that I could work and guide, with, guide women because I believe the Soul Sister Tribe is super important, especially with all of the crazy shit that's going on right now. We really need to, to just come together and support each other and lift each other up. Um, I wanted to simplify everything. So that's, that's what I've done to just, in, in a short little snippet, that's what I have done is just come into simplicity and really show myself some grace. And I... Every time I coach someone, I get so freaking fired up. Like, it's almost like a drug for me. It's totally crazy. And there's a woman that's on here with us, and her name's Kim. And I had the blessing to be able to coach her this last summer. And the, the shit that I saw her walk through and come to and just step into was is so fucking fantastic. <laughs> it's like, hug. Oh, it's crazy. I absolutely love it. So that is me in a nutshell. Awesome. Well, that's a good answer. All right. <laughs> that's a hard act to follow, Dana. I don't know. Come on. I don't know if you guys want to go yet. <laughs> um, any of you guys want to, well, I'll repeat the question. What were the key events that led you to this work that you're doing today? I'll go. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> So much like Dana, um, my life before this was a shitstorm of ups and downs, of trials and tribulations. And like Dana, I was also hiding and I was running, trying to run away from my God given talent and my ability to truly impact others because the events that preceded that, um, in a nutshell, for those of you that don't know, um, I, I went to college, I went to graduate school for education, I worked in the educational field, eh, got burnt out, wasn't interested in the whole bureaucracy of it, went to school again, went to um, get a master's in clinical psychology, worked in that field, but again, I was like right on the front lines of alcohol drug detox stuff, super, super burnout, um, to the point where I was just physically, emotionally, spiritually bankrupt. And I was only in my mid twenties. I literally was having like a midlife crisis when I was like 25 and I didn't know which end was up. So I, <laughs> yeah, it was a quarter life crisis, but it really almost felt like, but it really felt like I was like losing my, just losing my stuff, right? All over the place. And I managed to rebound through that. Um, and I got a degree as a massage therapist and loved it. I loved everything about it. I found that, oh my God, I could finally help people to heal, but in a way that's not taxing to my soul. Right. And so here I go. It's like 2011 now I'm feeling good. I'm like in my early thirties and boom, I just get hit on the way home from work, car accident, side swipe, person left, kept going, you know, um, was eventually arrested and, you know, whatever. But I thought I didn't really get hurt that day. I wanted to believe because I'd worked so hard to get there. So I was like, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't see, I don't see any bones. I don't see any blood. Like we're good. I'm good. And that was my first brush with actual, like, what is whiplash? <laughs> and if anyone's ever had it, you know that it's a really, it's, it's a real thing. And not only that, but it can lead to many other things that you can't even detect at first. So that was in 2011. And again, I felt like my life was falling apart. Um, I had, you know, all this education and I was in physical discomfort nonstop um, that was something that I was battling, but I also was forced to give up my massage therapy career and close my own business. 
So that was like heart wrenching after everything I had gone through after the nervous breakdown, I had built myself up, you know, back and feeling good, feeling confident. And in the blink of an eye and it felt like it was all gone. And with it went my self confidence again, like right down the shitter. And so for about two and a half years, while I was um, basically fighting a legal battle, that's another story for another day, but I was physically still hurt, but I wasn't getting the care that I needed because of insurance companies and blah, blah, blah. Um, so that was a fight in my end, but I sort of just kind of gave up. I gave up on myself. I gave up on, I didn't think because I became so depressed because I was so attached to what I had done as in my career that when it was lost, I lost who I was as a person. And so for about two and a half years, I hid in random shitty jobs where I got paid $8 an hour to do brainless, thankless, soul sucking work. Um, at one point during my worst time, I took a job as a telemarketer. And I tell this story not to demoralize telemarketers because in fact, I truly have a lot of empathy for them. And I'm very kind to people when they call, even if I don't want their doors and their signing in their windows, I'm not nasty about it because I lived on the other end of it. And I dreaded going to work. I, and again, nothing, like it didn't matter <laughs> rest, that I thought that's what, like I thought that's all there was. Like forget about the education, forget about what I could do and help people. I was like, okay, somebody will, somebody will pay me like $8 an hour to make phone calls and get screamed at. Okay, I guess I'll take that. And then I got fired from that. That, I believe, is really like one of the lowest points in my entire life. I was, oh God, I was really like 32, 33 years old. And here I am. And I walk in to go to work where I hated to be anyway. And some kid, literally, who was like 18, no, like no college degree, no high school diploma even, I don't think. He comes in and he goes, oh, we need to talk, you know, like, you know, you know bossy and everything. He says, well, you're not, you're not hitting your quotas and your numbers. And I'm thinking, no shit, Sherlock, because strangers don't want to buy shit from me, you know. But I didn't quite say it that way because, in fact, I didn't have any confidence back then. So I started to actually sob and I begged for my job. And that's really pathetic. It's pathetic that I thought that's what I was worth. I hid out for another couple of years um, after I got let go. And I can tell you on the way home, that car ride was, it, I did a number on myself, just beating myself up mentally. I kept saying like, oh my God, you're such a loser. How the hell did that happen? Look at you, you're pathetic. That was my internal dialogue, right? So two years after that, still hiding, playing, you know, whatever. Woman calls me out on it, point blank, while I'm in the bathroom one day, cleaning up stuff, because I was working at a gym, part of my job was to go in and clean the bathroom at the end of the day, okay? That just came with the territory. So it wasn't like, oh, I got this glamorous job at a spa and a night, you know, in a, you know, a sport, uh, sports club or anything. No, it was like, I'm the front desk lady and at the end of the night, I gotta go empty the trash and, you know, take out the receptacles and all that kind of crap. So I'm in there one night and this lady I'd gotten to know really well says to me, I, you know, I have to ask you, what are you, what are you doing? And I just kind of looked at her very quickly and I was like, I, I don't understand what you're saying. Like I'm cleaning, you know? And she's like, no, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, cleaning? Like, <laughs> do you want to help? Right. So, and then like when the third time she asked me and I, I credit that woman, that guardian angel to really being the moment in which I feel like my soul was reignited again. Um, she looked at me and she just said, I don't mean, what are you doing right now? She said, I mean, what are you doing with your life? She said, why are you here? Why are you wasting your time, your energy? She said, and she was very frank about it. She did not pull back. She said, why are you here? She said, getting paid and doing, getting paid minimum wage, doing a job, quite frankly, that someone without a high school diploma could do. And I was like, Oh, right. They talk about stopping dead in your tracks. I mean, I didn't, how do you respond to that? How did I respond to that? I remember just looking at her and, and thinking, I, I don't know. I don't know. No one's ever asked me that. I don't know what I'm doing here. And from there was really, I want to call it my journey towards like self-love, self-acceptance, building myself back up. But this time 
understanding that no matter what I did, it would not define me as a woman. And my, my worth would be based on, you know, um, being a child of God and being someone who is a spiritual being. And my whole life, I did a 180. And, you know, of course, we'll talk about probably more about that. But that's essentially what happened. I mean, I went back to work. Actually, I, I did take a job in teaching, but then I wound up having surgery. And after that, it was like, okay, not sure what I'm going to do now. But at that point, I said, you know what, God? It's up to you. I, every time I try to do it, I, I turn it into a chip pie. You know, like, it's like, you do it. Like, you take it. You tell me. You show me. You direct me. I'll go. And lo and behold, this is who I am today. So... And that's how you got here. <laughs> how I got in this seat right here and how I met Sarah Marie Thompson over in the mutual coaching group that we were both in. A couple years about, back. Yeah, about three years now. So, yeah, that's well, my story. Well, that, I mean, so there's a few things that happened. You had a few events that, uh, but again, <laughs> it's, it's those stepping stone events, right? Like, there's not really one thing that ever happens or one person that you ever really meet. It's like the whole process. Right. But, um, yes, obviously your accident was one of those like wake up calls from the universe. It's like, you're going the wrong way. Boom. <laughs> right. So. In um, hindsight, blessing. So. And what about you, Anna? All right. So I'm going to try to keep this short, <laughs> but it's a long story. Um, one thing I can say is that I think for me, it wasn't so much key events. A lot of the time it was more of a calling that I felt um, from a very young age. And I was really following my passion um, to begin with. So I built my first website when I was like 17. Um, I was totally new. Well, internet was a totally new thing. And I was just really fascinated. And I loved this new way of connecting with people all over the world. I was in 1997 and then, yeah, I'd always been a creative person. I always loved uh, trying out new things. So I felt inspired to learn how to make my own websites and pretty quickly, yeah, I, I felt that this was something I wanted to do for a living someday. And I always had this entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I was always a dreamer <laughs> and yeah, so that was just kind of the vision I had back then. But a lot of time passed, um, probably about 10 to 12 years. And I, I went, well, I graduated from high school, went to university, got my master's, um, then worked in the advertising industry for about three years. And um, yeah, I just remember sitting in front of my computer at my job and just constantly dreaming about being my own boss and starting my own thing. And I had a lot of creative ideas and books I wanted to write and businesses I wanted to start and that kind of thing. And I also wanted to be more free to make my own schedule and travel and, and spend time in nature. Um, and uh, yeah, just really follow my dreams basically and so I just knew I had to do it someday um, but it took me a while to actually take that leap I tried to find a part-time job for a while that was kind of my, my idea to um, transi transition gradually from my job to my own business and you find a part-time job and then build my business on the side but that just Cats. Sorry, that was my cat. <laughs> um, yeah, he loves to do that when I'm not paying attention to him. <laughs> anyway, so that just didn't work out. And I realized at some point that it, it just didn't work out because that's not what I really wanted. What I really wanted was to just go for it and just start my business. And um, so... One day I was talking to my cousin and she had just read the book, The Secret, and she was also starting her own business. And so we talked a lot and I really got the inspiration and, and that nudge, uh, I guess, also from the outside a little bit to just go for it. And so I read that book and then everything went very quickly. So I just, um, yeah, it really helped me just 
you know, stay really positive and just stay focused on what I wanted to create. And, um, yeah, I remember we had, like, um, a conversation with, with our boss or something like that. Um, I don't remember what they called it, but just kind of a yearly talk about, you know, what's going on and um, if you're getting a raise or not. <laughs> and I, I asked for more, uh, yeah, for a higher salary, but I kind of knew that it was probably not going to happen. But then, yeah, they kind of said no. And that was definitely then I knew, okay, I'm just going to quit. And I quit that same day. And I never looked back. Um, nice. So you took that I, Yeah. And I was living in Switzerland at the time. And so, yeah, like I had a three month waiting time, but I just, uh, then yeah, once I quit, um, actually my employer became my first client. That was pretty cool. So That's uh, <laughs> I seamlessly transitioned. Um, and yeah, okay. I'm going to try to speed up a little bit, but, um, so I, I basically took what I knew from corporate and took, uh, turned that into my own business and so I was still copywriting and um, editing content mostly for uh, corporate clients. And um, yeah, I was pretty successful. I grew my business pretty quickly with a lot of passion and also a lot of hard work. Um, but about a year later, I really started hitting a wall and I started feeling a lot of resistance to continuing on this path. And I wasn't really sure what was going on at first I thought I just wanted more time freedom and I wanted to yeah be on my own schedule even more and maybe not work for corporate clients as much anymore so I started exploring different ways of making income and so building passive income that type of thing um so but a lot of stepping stones then just like little mm, incremental stepping stones that yeah you um obviously mm. having your own um, like website and business and, and mentoring individuals now. So mm. it's interesting how like when you look at everybody's story, like it's not just like we woke up and we were like, well, I'm just going to do this. Like it's not like that doesn't happen. Um, let me read the question again. What were the key events that led you to this work? Um, if I was to answer this question, I would probably say that, oh, I want to like keep it really, really short. I would probably say that, um, initially, um, well doing creative stuff. I mean, that's, that had always been like my life, but I would probably say it was actually meeting, um, meeting a girl that I started my first website with and we kind of started that creative movement online and, at that same time, I got really into like energy work and that kind of thing. And then really implemented like those two key factors. And then honestly, the rest was like, in between that time, I had a corporate job where, um, you know, it was like the golden handcuffs and I was like making really good um, income and I had a company car and free gas and like all that stuff I can think about now. But, you know, I cried every day. I like cried every day, pretty much. If I had to go away for work, I would like cry. Um, I was not happy at all. And I was still bu building my business at the same time. So it wasn't until I like really took like, I have to quit. I have to quit this. And like, just if, if I believe in myself enough, it's going to work. Right. So, you know, sometimes you have to do that. I know some people think that, you know, you have to save some money on the side before you quit a job. That doesn't work. Like, come on. That, like, when do people ever do that? <laughs> I don't know if you if you can't do that that's really really cool but anyway um so I guess it was just a few things like that that really kind of got me into just shifting more into the um, more spiritual metaphysical side of things and then really just continuing like you know um showing up you know what I mean and and those are kind of like my stepping stones there's a bazillion stepping stones that I've gone through but that's really brought me to the work that I'm doing today um so thank you all for answering next question um is have you ever wanted to quit or have you, or do you have days that you want to quit? <laughs> I'd love to know your answers. I know I'll, I'll go first because mine will be quick, but um, you know what? I, I even have days where I'm just like, 
do I really want to do this still? Do I really want to do this every single day, like moving forward for the rest of my life? And there are parts of it that I don't want to, and there are parts of it that I want to. So the parts of it that, that I want to always make me continue to keep going, keep going. But when I have those days, I have to ask myself like, okay, what do I need to readjust here to make it better for myself? So yes, of course I have those days. Um, what about you guys? Absolutely. I absolutely. Uh, I know. I know. With me, it um, it honestly comes down to self worth, right? It's um, in the comparison factor. Like Sarah's told me a million times, you need to create what you need to create for yourself, not for anybody else. And so you can literally get on and just totally and completely explode your entire spirit and and everything that you think that you desire to do by looking on there and thinking everybody is fucking perfect because it's not um so yeah i think it's 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 really you know keeping for me it's it's you know keeping my sacred space close and doing what i need to do on on my days that i feel like i need to do and and not comparing myself to anybody because i have my own magic to share just like every single woman that i run into and and just making that conscious you know effort every day to adjust it so that it's joyful right if it if you're not having joy in your life you need to think about why it's there and allow mm -hmm. it to go so that's me and i know lisa just um went to the bathroom probably and i'll, I'll get anna anna to answer but i'll just kind of add in you know i think that so many people think that people that are online that seem to have you know, the shiny photographs and the nice branding and the cool offers and all of that are just kind of sailing through, you know, just every moment. And that's not the case. You know, we're like, everybody's real. Uh, everybody has ups and downs in their business. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, um, a service provider online that's making, you know, a nice $20,000 a day. Like there's probably some moments where they're still like, well, I don't, I don't like my life in this moment, right? So again, it's just so important to just readjust, right? Like, what is it that maybe, it's not everything, right? We have to look at, like, our whole existence, not as one big piece. We're not broken. But, you know, like, spiritual, mental, physical, um, like, all these different parts of our business that it's like, is there a little bit that could be tweaked, right? Because it's usually not the whole thing, right? But it feels like the whole thing. What do you think, Anna? Totally agree. And yeah, I definitely <laughs> have those days as well still. And um, yeah, one thing I didn't mention before was that I, um, yeah, then transitioned to my spiritually based business eventually. And then things became a lot more challenging um, business wise. I had to learn to do things in a totally different way and went through a lot of other life changes as well, such as moving back to Canada. Um, yeah, so especially this year, actually, I've had quite a few moments when, um, yeah, I definitely felt like I needed to do things differently. And last year, I kind of lo lost my passion for what I was doing a little bit. And so I had to do a lot of uh, rebuilding and reconsidering. And it's not always easy kind of to start from scratch and, and finding a new direction and yeah I've definitely had those moments when I thought it might just be easier to go and find a job or do something else and um what do you think it is that, hmm. that makes um like people online or people that are doing their thing and they're enjoying it they're enjoying their passion they're enjoying their 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 purpose job or what have you career um but yet you know when they're not making the income that they want to make I think that that definitely makes people waver, right? Makes people be like, oh, is this really my thing? Like, am I really, like, is this it? And um, what do you think it is, though? Like, do you think it's specifically, um, you know, not making the income that you want? Or do you think that it's um, feeling, like, tired and drained from the work that you're doing? Or just complete, like, not being in alignment? Like, what do you guys think that it really is that is the answer that makes people feel that way? Whether you are making $20,000 a day or a week or $10 a day a week. Like there's, there's something emotional that happens there, right? Like, what do you guys think that it is? Okay. Lisa, do you know what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah. 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 So you, you were talking about like, have you ever felt like giving up? Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So to answer that, 
Uh, yes. <laughs> um, you know, again, if you're looking only at other people online who are posting only the good stuff that happens and they never talk about anything else and they never talk about, you know, just having like human experiences, right? Um, you're never going to feel like you're good enough because what you're seeing is somebody else's highlight reel and you're comparing it to your, you know, your back end. Um, and so I did that in the beginning. I felt like, what's wrong with me? I'm not making blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, this whole six figure, seven figure, six figure, seven figure. I just get thrown around like crazy. And yeah, is it attainable? Sure. Is it attainable in two weeks? Probably not. Not the way people make it seem. And so if you find yourself comparing yourself to those kinds of people, just stop. Really stop. Um, it will kill your confidence. It will kill your drive. You'll even question why you're doing this. And in terms of other days when I want to quit, uh, yeah, because there's days where, you know, you feel like you pour your heart and soul into it. And at the end of the day, maybe no one signed up for your course or you put together this awesome challenge and only five people registered for it. Or, yeah, there's a lot, you know, you bend over backwards and you create a payment plan for a client and then the client's like uh I can't really even do that sorry and they just like walk away right and you're like um hello like I had a like, an agreement like could you talk to me about it like you know and so yeah those are the things where I'm like you know this would be a lot easier if somebody else was taking care of all of this mm. right where somebody had the authority to go after the person and enforce that contract to get that money. You know, like that's what employers do for their businesses, right? So, yeah, of course there are days. But, but the joy of experiencing and witnessing people having major, major breakthroughs and major life transitions, people, you know, literally just getting up, walking away from domestic abuse, um, and then creating a whole new life for themselves. You know, those kinds of things that happen, and those happen more than not, right? It's like what you focus on. Um, those kinds of stories are so empowering for me. They're so incredibly uplifting, and, I, and that's when I know my soul feels on fire again. And so will I weigh it against those few days here and there where it's like, ah, oh, crap, that person didn't buy that package or eh, somebody skipped out on a discovery call. That sucks. Yeah, it totally outweighs it. It really does. Do you think that, uh, for any of you, this question, do you think that being a more sensitive, spiritual entrepreneur online makes it harder to be a business person? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why do you think, Dana? Um, I think that we all need to know what our boundaries are. And I think that we all need to be sensitive to that. And, and you, it's, it's, um, I believe myself to be an incredibly sensitive, um, empathic, enlightened person. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think that it's important to honor that. And, and to also know what you can and can't do in your business. So if there's things that you can't do and that you're uncomfortable with, then there's ways to, um, to delegate those things out. And it doesn't have to be super expensive. It can be done on a trade. You know, there's things that you can do to make your, your life easier so that you don't have the burnout. Burnout's going to happen. And I honestly think in those times where I'm questioning myself or really freaking tired, those are the times where I can actually really look at what the heck I'm doing and see how it is or is not serving me. And then how can I change that? So the hard stuff is, is a way for, for me just to really even pay attention, even though it does take me sometimes too long to get out of that those are the times where I've actually gotten a lot of my gifts. Did that even answer it? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, what do you think, Anna? Do you think that it is trickier sometimes being more an, an emotional, sensitive person in business? I literally just wrote an article about this yesterday. <laughs> so impeccable timing. Um, I would say 
yes and no. It depends on, I guess, how we've really learned to deal with our sensitivity. But I think a lot of us have struggled with our sensitivity in our lives. And it was definitely the case for me. And I see that in a lot of my clients as well. Um, I think, yeah, what Dana said is really important. We have to know how to do things differently. Like we typically can't do things exactly the way we see other people, you know, running their business or, um, and I think that's true for everybody. We have to kind of find what works for us anyway, but um, yeah, I think it's really important to honor our boundaries, as you said, Dana, and just be honest with ourselves about what we really want. Um, one of the most challenging uh, things I've experienced in my business, maybe in the last few years more than in the past, um, after I had kind of experienced a lot of trauma, um, I started distrusting myself and then I started looking to others for guidance, kind of subconsciously in a lot of ways, but I, it became really difficult for me to know my own boundaries and know what I really wanted and I started confusing my own desires with other people's desires and, and you know, other people's ideas and thoughts. So that was something I really had to relearn to really come back to myself and, and trust and first of all, feel what I'm really feeling in my body and trust that and then take action based on that. Um, that's definitely made a big difference. Um, but yeah, I think there's a dysfunctional way of um, dealing with our sensitivity and there's also a healthy way of dealing with our sensitivities. I think it definitely depends on our life experience and everything as well. Good point. <laughs> mm. yeah where we're at with things too right what about you Lisa um I know for me personally that it has affected me and I remember Sarah and I you having this conversation like three years ago um because growing up um Christian and growing up Catholic um even now to which I still you know I am a Catholic I'm a Christian and every time I hear about, you know, you know, if, if someone needs something, essentially, you know, we're supposed to just give it away, right? Like, you know, then the person who, who hoards or holds on to something or, you know, is considered, I guess, you know, lazy and, and all these sort of things that we grew up with. And while I have developed my own opinions um, on the Catholic church and things like that, you know, I'm just being a sensitive individual in general and being very spiritual in general, I kind of did feel badly about asking for any money because the stuff just came so easy to me. And I think Sarah, you're the one you, we, we were talking and you said, well, who are two of your role models? And I literally said, Jesus and mother Teresa. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, oh. Yeah. And she was like, Oh, okay. Right. This is, and I don't think she, we knew each other that well back then. Right. And, and you were trying to walk me through it. And I'm like, what, well, what's wrong with that? I'm like, those were beautiful human beings that gave like everything. And she was like, I know they couldn't even afford their own underwear. You were like, is that <laughs> where you want to be? Like, and you said it in such a lovingly like joking way that I, I felt what you were saying. You know what I mean? Like I got it. I was like, right. Those were people that were like highly self-actualized, like obviously were, were martyrs to a point. Right. And that's okay. That's what they did. But it's okay if I actually want to buy my own underwear and my own food and my own, you know, and my own clothes and, and take a nice trip and buy a nice car and things like that. So I, <laughs> yeah, like I, I have definitely worked tremendously over the last couple of years in particular. Um, and have learned that it, that it's more than okay. And I think one of the things, and I don't know if you'll touch on this, but I want to kind of swing back if we don't, this idea of how much money you make equates your self-worth, right? Because there's this lie going on in this whole entire industry about if you're not making money, then, well, basically you suck. And that's not the case. Um, you know, and we do it to ourselves, but, if, you know, certainly we come back to it. But I do feel like, that was an issue too that I had in the beginning and, and something I kind of still struggle with, right? It's like, 
I was trying to teeter that line, you know, of where, where am I giving enough? Where am I then honoring myself and allowing for myself to have things that I need? And, you know, how do you not take it personally when someone says no, all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, it, it definitely has. Sorry for the long winded answer, but yeah. No, that's good. Um, it's just so interesting, our perspectives on things, because when I first had my very first business, when I was 21, I had an interior design company, and my role models were people like Bob Proctor and um, uh, Brian Tracy and, like, all of the, like, influential men in business, and I I don't know. Like, I can't, like I, I'm thinking back, like, and I don't really think that I – I had a lot of female business role models. Like I had women that um, kind of took me under their wing, like as a young adult, right? And they were very powerful women um, that I knew in person. But when it came to like the people that you really look up to for business, I really looked up to the suits. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it did, it felt a little weird. Like it was exciting and it was inspiring. And I was like, I want to climb the corporate ladder. I didn't even know what that meant, but I was like, I want to climb the corporate ladder in heels. And, um, you know, looking back, I was like so in the masculine energy. And now, I mean, I'm pretty balanced, but I'm way more in the feminine energy now with the, with the work that I do. And it makes such a difference. So I will say this, though, being more the feminine energy and being more sensitive and being open to it and being more um, open to your intuitive gifts and more empathic and all that kind of stuff and just being open, I would say that I it is a little bit trickier than just being like a hard edge been business person because yeah. also though too that didn't serve me back then either because like I was really in the masculine and I like can look back and say that I wasn't even using my intuition in some in some um, events and instances right like so there has to be that balance and I think that a really good business person a sensitive um, you know uh, spiritual business person has to be balanced and I, that, I think that's the thing that it's like the trickiest thing to do right? Is like really embrace your feminine energy, really embrace your masculine energy, knowing when to pull the brakes on it too. And, um, but again, like Anna said, it's like the life experiences that show you kind of how to get balanced. Right. So yeah, I think it is tricky at times. Um, and, uh, is Allie on Allie Jean, um, was talking or I was watching a thing of hers uh, this morning and she was saying about how like, it's okay to cry. (laughs) It's okay to cry. Um, you know, uh, in your business and, you know, be open and vulnerable to people online and different things like that. And, um, that really is the truth though, right? Because people will connect with you much more deeply if you are open. Um, like you were saying, Lisa, about how, you know, if you're not sharing your stories, good and bad, then, well, you're not really being authentic online, right? So anyway, um, and anybody just as you're watching too, if you have any questions at all, please post them in the um, chat box or raise your hand and you can come and talk to us. Um, We'd love to hear from you in person um, and that kind of thing too.